you are watching the Andres Agenda. My name is Andres. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. Um, so I wrote, uh, I recently saw Shazam. I saw it last night. So I wrote a review <clears throat> and I would just like to uh, read uh, the review to you. Okay, so here we go. My review for Shazam. Okay, it's a kid's movie. Don't watch it. Yeah, that's basically it. Don't watch it. It's not good. It's a kid's movie that's inappropriate for kids. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to spoil the whole movie, so don't watch it. Uh, instead, you don't have to watch it because I'm going to spoil it. So instead of watching the movie, uh, read, uh, watch this video. And uh, then read the book America the Farewell Tour by Chris Hedges. Uh, that book has nothing to do with the movie Shazam, uh, which is why you should read it. Uh, I've read it twice. Okay, how this movie got such a high score on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't know, but it seems that this has been happening a lot lately. Bad movies getting good reviews. Um, <clears throat> okay, so first a little trivia. Shazam was actually called Captain Marvel when he was created in comics way back in the 1930s, uh, soon after Superman was created. So first Superman was created, then, Cap then the Shazam Captain Marvel was created. <clears throat> uh, later, Marvel, much later, lit Marvel Comics created their own very different Captain Marvel. They've got their own movie now. The Shazam Captain Marvel could fly, was super fast, super strong, had a cape and a red suit. So the owners of Superman uh, sued the owners of Captain Marvel, claiming he was a Superman knockoff, understandably. And uh, to make a long story short, eventually DC ended up owning both Superman and Captain Marvel. That's why Shazam is now, Captain, is now in the DCEU. Okay, so the first mistake in this movie was casting Jimmy Fallon as Shazam. Okay, ha ha ha, it's not Jimmy Fallon, but I kept getting distracted by how uh, the actor looks like Jimmy Fallon. Um, now, in the beginning of the movie, when a kid enters the cave and asks the wizard, Who are you? The wizard should have said, I'm the black guy who dies first. Uh, yeah, you know, in comics, the last wizard does die. In the comics, the last wizard does die. Uh, I knew that was going to happen, so when I saw that they cast a black guy to play him, I wasn't surprised. Um, now, Billy Batson, the hero, is part, he's a kid, he's part of a sitcom family, complete with perfect older sister, cute little sister, and obese dad, uh, with a thin and beautiful mom because, you know, Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin represent all fathers to a person. The high school bullies commit uh, vehicular assault, but that's no big deal, of course. You know, hit some kid with a car. What's the big deal? Uh, Billy turns into a superhero, but he's still the same immature kid. And uh, this is an important difference because in some versions of the comics, Billy turns into the hero, and Billy and the hero are actually two different people trading places, you know? Uh, so it's not like Clark Kent and Superman are the same person, uh, just in different disguises and different outfits. No, no, no. In, in some of the comic book versions of uh, the DC Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel and Billy Batson are two different people. But in the movie, they're the same person. Um, while in super mode, Billy saves a bus full of people in a very clumsy way that should have resulted in more injuries, but like the vehicular assault, this movie seems to treat violence like it's no big deal. It's like the movie makers don't care or don't understand what violence is. There's also a scene in the Superman 1978 movie where the Man of Steel saves a bus but he does it much better than Billy does in this movie. So is this a reference to that movie or is it a lack of creativity? Are they trying to say that he's not as good as Superman? 
well then why not have Superman mentor him? That's a good idea for a movie. Um, this is actually a theme they touch on, but way too brief and briefly. They touch on it instantly, just for an instant. Um, the villain is bald and injured in his youth and part of a big corporation. Sound familiar? Yeah, it was like Lex Luthor in the TV show Smallville. And his father is played by John Glover, who is also the head of the same corporation and who also played Lex Luthor's father, all just like in the TV show Smallville. So again, are they referencing Smallville or is it just a lack of creativity? Now, like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, there's a lot of, uh, there's a corporate villain who kills the members of the board to take over the board. And even one of the board members is in a wheelchair, just like in uh, the Spider-Man movie. And, um, and there are daddy issues throughout the movie. <clears throat> so again, uh, references or lack of creativity? Uh, it feels like the studio decided to mix Spider-Man and Harry Potter and throw in foul language, scary monsters, killing people by throwing them out of windows, and a strip joint. Now, there's no nudity and no F-bombs, but there is the presence of the strip joint twice. Kids go into the strip joint. Uh, and then there's the foul language, including Santa Claus dropping bleeped F-bombs. Uh, and, you know, like I said, there's the violence. So it is PG-13, but still parents should keep kids away from this movie, which is mistakenly marketed towards kids. Um... The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is how you make a superhero movie for kids and adults. Whoa, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I think I'm having technical issues. So anyway, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is how you make a superhero movie for kids and adults. Harry Potter is how you make a magic movie for kids and adults. Star Wars 1977 is how you make a movie with a lot of eye candy for kids and adults. Uh, this movie feels like a parody of superhero movies. Yes, it's a kids movie, uh, so the kids are being silly without realizing it because they're just kids, but I found it immature, irritating, out of place, confused, not focused. Uh, there is an important symbolism in the end of the movie, which ties to the beginning of the movie. <coughs> Excuse me. Which could have been done so much better had they taken the time to flesh it out. <clears throat> but did the stu they didn't flesh it out. So did the studio think that uh, fleshing it out would be too intellectual and too slow and too boring and take up too much time? Kids can handle smart material. Maybe they don't understand it or can't, maybe they can't verbalize it, but they can enjoy it. When we saw Star Wars in 1977, when we were as young as five years old or whatever, we didn't understand why we liked it, but we sure loved it. So in sum, uh, don't watch Shazam. Um, that's all for today's The Andres Agenda. What is on your agenda? Mm -hmm.